Rungam presents Empathy Learns Webinar. Webinar Episode 1, The Competitive Advantage of Disability Inclusion and Neurodiversity Strategy. Discover how embracing disability inclusion can drive innovation, expand market reach, and provide a significant competitive edge for your business. Learn about the untapped potential and tangible benefits of creating an inclusive workplace. Hello, friends, and welcome to the Empathy Learns webinar series by Rangam. Uh, our, our topic today is the power of disability inclusion and neurodiversity. Uh, we're going to be focusing on the competitive advantage of disability inclusion specifically. Um, our, our emphasis here is that the future of work is inclusive. My name is John Bryson. I'm the Senior Director of Learning and Development and Diversity, Equity, Inclusion at Rangam. I'm also a neurodivergent professional. I have ADHD with over 18 years of experience advocating for inclusion in workplaces, colleges and universities, schools, uh, communities. And it's something I'm very passionate about, really excited to be able to do this for a career. I'm thrilled to have you join us today for episode one where we are kicking off an engaging journey together over the next 12 episodes. Uh, each of our sessions is just 15 minutes. It's designed to easily fit into your day while providing valuable insights that are gonna help you make your workplace more inclusive, more innovative, a place where everyone can thrive, everyone can belong. And in today's episode, we're really gonna talk about um, the, the benefits of doing that. So when you think about many companies uh, that have recognized that disability inclusion is important, uh, that it's, it's about leveraging unique perspectives, unlocking untapped potential and, and building a more resilient and, and creative business, the companies with the most success recognize those things and that it's not just simply about meeting legal requirements. Organizations that prioritize inclusivity find that their teams are more adaptable, innovative, and deeply connected to a diverse customer base. Now, when you think about this, over 1 billion people in the world live with some form of disability. I mean, think about that for a moment. That's a staggering number of people. One in seven people on the planet have a disability. By creating an inclusive environment in your workplace, you not only tap into a larger talent pool, which is a huge competitive advantage, but you also gain insights that help your business connect with a huge market that's often overlooked. Disability inclusion drives innovation, expands your reach, and brings a richness of thought to your company culture that you really just can't find elsewhere. So let's start by breaking down why disability inclusion is important, why it matters. It's not just a moral perspective. Uh, I believe that disability inclusion is the right thing to do. And I believe the first reason a company should really invest in being inclusive for people with disabilities is because it's the right thing to do. You want your workplace to be a place where all people can thrive and belong and have space, where all people can contribute, but it's not the only reason. There just so happened to be a lot of cherries on top from a strategic business standpoint that are worth talking about. So imagine a workforce where people from all backgrounds with different ways of thinking and unique problem solving approaches can come together to tackle challenges. Diversity of thought leads to more innovative solutions. And, and when you include individuals with disabilities, you invite new ways of approaching problems, new perspectives on challenges and ultimately new opportunities for success. I'm gonna dive in to a lot of these things over the, the time that we have together. 
So studies have shown that companies who, that embrace disability inclusion are more likely to outperform their peers in terms of profitability and value creation. So there's this really important report that came out in 2017 by Accenture. And according to that report, companies that champion disability inclusion achieve on average 28% higher revenue, double the net income, and 30% higher profit margins compared to those that don't prioritize it. These aren't just numbers. They're a testament to the value of building a workforce that reflects the diversity of the world we live in. So this report, getting to equal the disability inclusion advantage was uh, a foundational uh, piece of information that highlights uh, the findings demonstrated by this clear business case for disability inclusion. If you have a, an opportunity, get your hands on, on that report. So let's talk more about innovation. This is something really important to us here at Rangam. We believe empathy drives innovation. Uh, innovation is a really important aspect of finding solutions to problems. And so innovation often arises from the need to solve a problem in new and creative ways. It also requires us to have an awareness of that problem. People with disabilities, we are often natural innovators. Uh, we've, we've had to adapt to a world that isn't really designed for <clears throat> the way we do things and our needs in mind. This adaptability and resilience, uh, I'm not speaking for all people with disabilities here, but, but many uh, that I know and have worked with throughout my career would agree with me here that, that our adaptability and resilience translate often directly into valuable skills in the workplace. So when a company creates an environment where everyone can contribute, getting barriers out of people's way. Uh, those companies open the door to the ideas and perspectives people with disabilities may have that would have been missed otherwise. And that's really important. I always say it's like trying to solve a problem with the same group of people for 20 years, but the person that had the solution that was going to come up with the right idea was never invited to the meeting. And so companies focusing on inclusion for people with disabilities create a space and a way for us to share those ideas and contribute to that innovation, which is really key. So I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, the development of closed captioning, voice to text technology, and even something as simple as, as curb cutouts. These are all innovations that were initially designed to accommodate people with disabilities, but they've since become widely beneficial to everyone. Think about how many people use voice assistants like Siri or Alexa, even ChatGPT now has an app that you can talk to. Technologies originally rooted in the needs focused on accessibility. If not for people with disabilities, arguably these advancements may have either taken much longer to, to get to or, or possibly never at all because it wouldn't have occurred as a need. So by fostering a culture of inclusion, you encourage employees to bring their whole selves to work. And that, that's, that's crucial, it's, that's vitally important. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about market reach. This is something that, uh, that you know, often gets overlooked, but you, you really have the ability to expand market reach. And next slide here for me. Over 1 billion people globally, as I said, live with disabilities, right? And that represents a significant market opportunity. When companies take steps to be inclusive, whether that's by designing products or ensuring uh, the market the, their, their marketing speaks to everyone. They're not just doing the right thing. They're opening their doors, their products, their brand to a massive customer base. So it's not just about hiring people with disabilities. Of course, you want your workforce to reflect the communities that you serve and support, but but also when we hire and when we have an inclusive culture, we're more likely to have more inclusive messaging and branding and products, which speaks to that, that large customer base. So consider the spending power of people with disabilities and their families. In the United States alone, it's estimated to be over 645 billion annually 
according to a report from 2020 uh, on the return on disability group. This figure highlights the economic impact and potential of this often overlooked market. Companies that understand the value of this market and make their products and services accessible are positioning themselves to capture that spending power. Accessibility isn't just about compliance. It's, it's also about creating products and services that everyone can use and in, in turn expand your customer base. We, we see this more and more with technology. So take, for instance, the, the fashion industry. Uh, brands like Tommy Hilfiger have launched adaptive clothing lines designed specifically for individuals with disabilities. By doing so, they've tapped into a market that was previously underserved and they've, they've shown their commitment to inclusivity. And the result is that they've increased brand loyalty. They brought in their customer base. They have a stronger reputation because they've become an inclusive company. And according to Forbes, uh, these, these adaptive clothing lines have also contributed to increased overall sales as consumers respond positively to companies that demonstrate genuine social responsibility. Now, another key competitive advantage of disability inclusion is the resilience and adaptability it brings to your workforce. Again, employees with disabilities often possess this, this innovative uh, quality because we, we have to, but we also tend to be strong problem solvers and, and generally have a, a high level of adaptability because we're navigating a world that isn't always accommodating. So we're, we're constantly finding ways to do things and, and make adjustments uh, to make life work for us because we're not just you know, going to give up and, and uh, you know, allow barriers to, to hold us back. We're constantly plowing through and, and trying to progress and move forward. So think about the skills that we have that are incredibly valuable in today's fast paced, ever changing business environments. When you hire people with disabilities, you're not just filling a role with a qualified candidate, but you're also bringing these intrinsic intangible qualities to your workforce uh, with individuals that can help your organization adapt to change and overcome challenges and thrive in the face of uncertainty. So this adaptability is a competitive advantage. It helps diversify the characteristics and qualities on your team. And especially in industries where change is constant, the ability to pivot quickly is crucial. A Harvard Business Review article in 2022 noted that companies with diverse workforces, including employees with disabilities, are 1.7 times more likely to be innovation leaders in their industry. So moreover, when employees see that you value inclusion, it boosts morale, it boosts engagement, uh, and, and ultimately it, it boosts retention uh, because employees uh, feel more valued and they wanna be a part of those organizations. So employee engagement is higher in inclusive workplaces and engaged employees are more productive, more satisfied, and more likely to stay with the company long-term. Now, consider some of the world's most successful companies, some of the great examples that we have to look to. And there are many that have made commitments. Many of our clients are some of these organizations that have done amazing things. But I'm, I'm going to call out three specific ones because they've been important to me and in, in the example they've set throughout my career as I've watched their, their commitment continue to grow. And that's Microsoft, SAP, and Walgreens, just to name a few. Uh, not trying to exclude any organizations doing great things. These are just personally important to me in my own uh, journey as an advocate. These organizations gained access to broader talent, uh, increased employee engagement and customer loyalty, brand reputation, and they also created some, some very amazing, innovative strategies and products. Uh, so I just wanted to talk about Microsoft is a great example. The company made significant commitment to disability inclusion, both in terms of hiring and product development. Microsoft's accessibility team works to ensure that all their products are designed with accessibility in mind. It's actually baked into their design cycle. They don't go through the design process on a product without evaluating and considering accessibility. And so they ensure that all products are designed with that. Um, they also have made a commitment to hiring and, and they, they launched an autism hiring program that saw tremendous success, improved the team's performance and also resulted in new product features driven by unique perspectives. So 
really great things at Microsoft. They've been a leader in accessibility, particularly some of their technologies are, are some of the most widely available accessible technologies people have at their fingertips. Another great example is Walgreens. This is maybe one of the best examples. The company launched an initiative to hire people with disabilities in one of their distribution centers, and the results were pretty astounding. Uh, pro productivity increased by over 20%. Turnover rates dropped by 30%, and the culture within their distribution centers became more supportive, more collaborative, and Walgreens found that by focusing on uh, qualifications and skills, uh, rather than allowing themselves to think that people with disabilities uh, potentially wouldn't be qualified, but really finding ways to adjust and accommodate uh, and make room for folks, they, they found that they were able to build stronger, more effective workforce. Um, this has been one of the most impressive, if you ever get an opportunity to see some of the things Walgreens did in those distribution centers are pretty incredible. And then the last example I'll give is SAP. It's a global software company, if you're not familiar. They embrace disability inclusion as a strategic priority. They have an autism at work program that aim to employ people on the autistic spectrum. Uh, recognizing the unique skills that they bring, such as attention to detail, strong focus on tasks. And, and this program not only provided meaningful employment opportunities, but it also led to innovation in SAP's products and services. According to a report that they put out in 2022, uh, teams that included employees hired through their Autism at Work program reported a 15% increase in productivity and higher employee satisfaction scores. So these three major organizations have seen the competitive advantage, the impact of disability inclusion in their workplaces, and, and it's just been full steam ahead since then. So creating a culture of inclusion requires intention and effort. It's not something that happens overnight. I promise you, small incremental steps lead to long-term sustainable growth. And it's okay to take that first step in this long journey. It's, it's, it's not something that can be achieved through a single initiative or a single policy. It's about creating an environment where everyone feels valued, respected, and empowered to contribute. And every step you take toward that is a step in the right direction. So one way to cultivate an inclusive culture is, is through what we're doing right now through education and awareness, training programs, you know, like the one that we offer at Rangam through Empathy Learns, which is the, the team that I lead. It's a great way to help employees understand the importance of inclusion, give them tools and strategies they need to foster and create that supportive work environment. And when employees understand the value of disability inclusion, they're more likely to take actions that support their colleagues and ultimately contributes to that cultural transformation, that culture of belonging that organizations so desperately want when they're trying to be inclusive. It's also very important and cannot be understated uh, to have leadership buy-in. Leaders set the tone for the entire organization. And when they demonstrate a commitment to inclusion, some of the most successful organizations I've seen uh, have had a leader demonstrate that commitment that filters down to every level of the company. Inclusive leadership means not only are you advocating for diversity, but you're also creating opportunities for people with disabilities to thrive within your organization, which is, you know, recruitment processes, of course, they, they need to be accessible. Uh, reasonable accommodations need to be things. The process needs to be smooth. The attitude people have toward the accommodation process needs to be one of positivity rather than negativity. Um, and, and simply you know, promoting an environment where everyone feels comfortable being themselves. These are all really important things leaders can have a tremendous impact on and really set the tone for the organization. Now, we've covered a lot of information. These 15 minute webinars are gonna be jam packed, okay? Uh, the key takeaway from today's session, if you took one thing, is that disability inclusion is a journey it's not a destination. It's not about checking a box or meeting a quota. It's about making a commitment to continuously improve and create an environment where everyone can su succeed. Each step that you take in your journey toward inclusion, even if it's a small one, brings you closer 
to building a workplace that is not only more diverse, but also more innovative, more resilient, and ultimately more successful. So as we wrap up today's episode, I encourage you to think about the steps your organization can take to become more inclusive. It might be as simple as reviewing your hiring practices to ensure they're accessible or providing training to help your team understand the value of disability inclusion. Whatever the step, remember that every action counts and contributes to that bigger picture of creating a more inclusive world, a more inclusive workplace, a place where everyone can really thrive. Now, if you'd like to take the next step toward making disability inclusion a strategic advantage for your organization, we'd love to support you. At Rangam, our Empathy Learn services offer a range of, of training programs designed to help companies like yours become more inclusive and leverage the power of diversity to drive success. And, and all of our training services are offered by people with actual disabilities and neurodivergent conditions. So that lived experience and that human-centered approach to, to education is at the core of who we are and how we approach this. So whatever you're looking for, whether it's e-learning modules, live instructor-led sessions, custom build courses, we have options that can fit your needs. We'd love to talk about it. So feel free to reach out to us, learn more about how our training programs can help your company grow and thrive. And together, we can build a workplace that truly works for everyone. Um, now, I really appreciate you taking time today. I look forward to seeing you in episode two. We're going to continue this journey by breaking some common myths about disability and neurodiversity. So let's continue uh, working to, to really recognize the power of disability inclusion and make a, a difference in our workplaces and communities. See you next time, friends. Thanks for joining us.